I have had things like this before, so I got to plug it in. Um, and I have found various versions of this and different different things. Here we go, guys. Wow, that is so cool. I love it. Welcome, Mike, the Golden State Picker, coming to you from his messy garage, but it works for me. If you're new to my channel, I am out of San Jose, California. I am a four-year full-time picker. Uh, I do Amazon FBA books, mostly, and eBay. I sell a little bit of everything. If you watch my channel, you'll see a lot of different things go up for sale. And today, we're going to show you some things that we found, more things that we found than more things that we sold, because it's flipped. Usually I have a lot of things that I sold, but for some reason it's been a little bit, you know, just steady. Nothing great, but I want to show you that so you can get an idea of what I considered for me a slow day. And then you can take from that and, you know, and say, hey, that's not too bad. And it's not too bad. I don't worry about that, but I wanted to show you what I consider a slow day and uh, how, you know, they, the days ebb and they flow. And sometimes when school starts, there's, we're right now at this school period, and I think there's a little bit of this where people are out doing more school stuff than maybe online. Maybe clothing's doing well. I don't know. Just giving you my, my take on it. I don't worry about it too much, but you do watch the trends and kind of take a look at, at what's happening. So I'm getting ready to go on vacation. So this video's got a little bit of that in it uh, because people ask, well, what do you do when I go on vacation? I put my store on time away. That means while I'm away, I will still accept orders and I can set it up where eBay tells them when I'll be back, when I will ship. And I also can set a note so that when the person buys it, they will see the note that, and then it will say, hey, I will be shipping this on this date approximately. So you can notify your buyer. Uh, I do that. Some people don't. But I like to come back and be busy. Last time I went on a two-week vacation, I sold, I think, 81 items. 81 items in two weeks. So that was pretty good, pretty darn good. So why not? Now, How some people say, well, what do you do with Amazon? Okay, I'm an Amazon FBA seller, mostly books. I don't do anything. I just let Amazon sell what I have in inventory. And they take care of everything. So that's even better. There's nothing for me to do because Amazon's going to sell books every day for me. My goal is to push as much Amazon FBA stuff in. I don't want to have anything left. I want to be pushing it in so that it gets to them even while I'm on vacation because it takes them some time to fish through your product. So then when I come back, I get right back on that Amazon train and find some stuff and get that in. So Amazon FBA, when you're on vacation, is, is really, really good. If it was all that, it would be really cool, but I gotta do eBay and I have to, you know, basically come back and uh, allow, so I allow myself time. That's the other thing you gotta do is, I like to, and being a reseller and owning your own business like this, you can set uh, your vacations to, uh, when you come back, how you wanna do it. So I always come back, like, I don't come back on a Saturday. I try to come back on a Thursday, something along those lines, so that I get Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and even Monday if I have a problem to ship because I set three day handling. So that's my goal is to give myself enough time to get everything out. That's the goal, okay? So that's how I kind of work vacation on eBay. Simple, I don't overthink it. Basically put it on time away and let it roll. All right, let's get into what we uh, found. We found some pretty cool stuff. This is from yesterday at uh, Savers. Today, garage sales and a flea market. So it's kind of a about a day and a half. I got some interesting stuff. I really got one cool, two cool items. I got a lot of cool items, but yeah, I got a lot of cool items on this one. Uh, at least I think so. So let's get started right off with this piece right here. Ah, here we go. And there it is. And a lot of you go, oh, I know what that is. Or at least you know the brand. It is Department 56. And this one is the Snow Village Halloween Victorian House. Very, very cool, okay? Missing some pieces though. We are missing the top and we're missing another piece over there. 
and I think one tree. But it doesn't matter. I paid $6 at Goodwill. Now, a lot of people say, oh, you can't get stuff at Goodwill. Yeah, it's getting harder, definitely getting harder. But if you keep your eyes open, stuff like this will pop through occasionally because they don't want to deal with it either. It's a tricky little item to ship. $6. I think I'm going to get, hopefully, uh, between 80 and 100 even with the missing pieces. This has a pretty good sell-through weight rate. Halloween's coming up. So this is the time you got to make sure all your Halloween's going up. So if you find a piece, put that up first. Don't let it sit around, obviously. Put it up first. It should take precedent over anything else you, you have, okay? Interesting. Here we go. At the flea market today, my friend Brian and his wife were out. And Brian said there was this really cool uh, booth that had some old books and military stuff. And it was like, oh, okay, I'm going to go check it out. Well, I got there and uh, I found these boxes. There are five of these boxes. And I'm going, okay, what's in those? Because your curiosity, right? You want to know. So I popped them open. There you go. Now people are starting to think about it. They are postcards. Yes, postcards. So I got five boxes of postcards. Managed to negotiate the deal. She wanted 40 and I said we'd take 30. And I got it for 30. Got them all for 30. And they are postcards of the Grand Canyon from the 20s. I'm going to show you some of them. So look at, very cool. And most of them are all, almost every one of them is sleeved. There might be five or six that aren't, but they're all sleeved. And I don't know if these are hand colored or not. If you know more about these, let me know. Um, because I am, it confuses me when I see the black and white and then the color in, in I, 1920s, that kind of thing. So it, it is definitely a little different. And these postcards are several. They're just very, very cool. And I watch uh, Don, the auction professor, because Don, he doesn't do what I do. Uh, I like to do, you, you know, the stuff you see me get, electronics, all that kind of stuff. He does a lot of that uh, Imperium. I can't, I can't say the word, so I screwed that word up. Uh, and that this is in that category, postcards. And so I saw them. I thought to myself, "Okay, let's 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 take a chance on this. Let's do this," uh, because they were all very cool, all of them, all very different. And then there was like this one. This one's interesting. Uh, you know, it says here, what does it say? A Pueblo woman and child. And interesting, you know. And the the guy's name, the guy who did this is Fred Harvey. I guess Fred Harvey. There's a lot of postcards are in here are his. So. Uh, I checked it out. There is some good value here. Don't know how many I have, but uh, very interesting. My first real uh, foray into something like this. So I will look at them and try to figure out what to do with them. If you guys are into it, let me know how maybe I should go about it. Leave a comment down below because I basically have no idea. So it's going to be interesting to see how I research this and do that. Now I'm going to get into the bin of books because I did the bin of books and I want you to see what I mean by the extra stuff that I get from eBay, but how I lot them, how I shoot them, just in general, and how fast that I try to get them up. When I get these home, especially book lots, because they're very, they, they take up a lot of space in my opinion and they just, they are you know, unwieldy, that kind of stuff. They're heavy sometimes. So I like to get them shot, bundled, and ready to store as fast as possible. Because if I, if I do bins three days a week and I don't, I could have a really big pile of books and I don't want that. So I am very fast with getting these up. And I want to show you some interesting lots just so you can kind of see. This one here was a lot of uh, Samuel French and they are all Plays, little playbooks, a comedy in three acts by Alan uh, Jellico, The Knack. There's just a bunch of these, okay? So I would lot those up like this, shoot them, lot them, and then I just kind of wrap them just to keep them so they don't just fall all over the place. Um, I don't have my roller, it's in the house, bummer. So what I do is I get the little uh, roller tape, it's a saran wrap, and I just saran wrap the lots like that. That saran wrap has been the biggest saver on books, like, you know, amazing for me. 
little books like this, little book sets, you can find these at, uh, you know, flea markets and garage sales. This is Flower Fairies of the Trees by Cicely Mary Barker. Many of you are going to know her. If you can find some of the original books here, they can sell for some good money. One of them uh, sold, I recently think, for $140. So, again, not these. These are reproductions, but this will probably get me uh, about 30. These down here, the plays, will probably get me about 40. So, I've got to get this stuff so that it, it offsets the cost of the bin. If you've been around uh, and you know what I'm talking about, the bins, right? If you're not, the bins cost a hundred dollars. And I go through the bins and separate the eBay stuff from the Amazon FBA stuff. I'm always trying to get the eBay stuff to pay the cost of the bin. So if the bin's a hundred dollars, I need to find a hundred dollars worth of stuff so I can sell that on eBay. And then the rest of the stuff that goes on Amazon is pure profit. That's how it works. Okay. Simple as that. Where you find them, you're just going to have to keep digging in your city and see if you can find people who will sell bins of books. Uh, it took me a year and a half. That's all I can tell you guys. It's not that easy. And I've always said it's not that easy. So keep that in mind. Now, I got a bunch of these. Wow. Look at this, right? This is, um, let's see if I can get the title page for you. Maybe I can. Maybe I can't. Yeah, and they're so old. Oh, here it is. The play, the, the Yale shakespeare collection they're these little blue books it looks like there are 40 of them i have all 40 this is just how i wrap them okay little bundles so that they don't go flying all over the place they're strapped down basically tightened up i got 40 of those uh i want to say uh about 150 dollars for those so i got 150 30 40 70 220 okay Right there is a bin and a, basically two bins, right? Because it's 200. So basically two. So that's how I'm working and thinking. Now, here's some interesting books. Now, uh, normally Time Life, I don't keep a lot of the Time Life sets. There's some that you do. It's the Time Life, the Gunfighters, the Old West. That's a pretty good set. And this one, too, can be okay. This is the Collector's Library of the Civil War. Time Life. I only got 10 of them, but they will sell, and they will sell between $40 and $50 for the 10, okay? So, um, again, there's like 260 so you can see where we're rolling here. We are almost getting the, the bins paid for strictly by eBay, and then all that Amazon book stuff is pure profit. You see me talk about that at the end of the year when we do the big uh, how much we made and try and break it down a little bit. So that's what we do there. Now, we're going to show you some uh, books by themselves, okay? Some interesting books by themselves. Sorry, there I got to reach for them. Unfortunately, I do. All right. Um, one of the great author, one of the great authors, I guess, because he's right. He writes prolifically. I don't know how he does it. Uh, it simply amazes me when you see all of these artists. From musicians to book writers, the talent that they have. And that is Stephen King. Stephen King has written some of the best horror books out there. Um, we just watched Shining while we were on vacation. Vacation, And Jack Nicholson and Shelley Duvall. And this is Pet Cemetery. Stephen King. First thing I do is I go, please be a first edition. Please be a first edition. Uh, so it's like every time Tyler, who works with me sometimes and comes out, and he does books, we both look and we go, let's be, let's let it be. And, the, and you open the cover. The first thing we do is we look down here. And there it is, book club edition. No, no shot at a first edition. But it is a first book club edition. <clears throat> and that has value too. Just doesn't have the two, three, four hundred dollar value. This is probably $30 and I sold it before, so nothing super great. Now, I found this one. This is where you, your life experience and some other things play a part. And that one here is this book, Zodiac by Robert Gray Smith. And because I have lived all my life in California, I know about the Zodiac, the Zodiac Killer. And it's very interesting. He was a serial killer. They never caught him. Many, many movies, documentaries about it. But this is the book, and this is the first edition. So a lot of people will pass this up. That's eh, just the Zodiac. What's that? Well, 
you got to look it up. I think this one, I think I can get about $75 to $100 for this one. That's that knowledge. I'm 61 years old, so I have that knowledge. So that rings to me, whereas maybe somebody who's 20 or 21 just might not. Okay, that's what I'm saying. So you've got to develop this huge knowledge base so that you know something like that might be might be good. Now, here is Stephen King. It, you know, remade into another movie. I, I prefer the original with um, John Boy Walton. I uh, prefer that version of It personally. And this one is by Viking. And I did the same thing. Opened up. No book club edition, okay? But we gotta do is we gotta look a little bit further in here and we've gotta get to the title page and all that kind of stuff. And we've gotta look for this page here and to see if we see any numbering sequence of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, anything like that. Anything that says first edition, third printing, etc. This one is a first edition. Now, doesn't mean it's going to be worth thousands, okay? <clears throat> this is all over the place, so I have to do a little more research. But I think we get a hundred, and we might get higher, but at least a hundred. We just have to look at condition, all kinds of factors in that, and it could be worth, you know, two hundred. Two hundred, I'd say, at the highest personally. Uh, sometimes you got to look in here and make sure that Stephen King didn't sign them. So you always got to check. He signed a lot, so you just got to be careful. Be careful of auto pen, all that kind of stuff. Now, this book has potential. This is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory by Roald Dahl. And uh, again, I got this, and I'm looking at it. You can see the condition. It's it's an okay condition, nothing great. But you open it up, and you got to start looking again at that page. First, there's some writing, so we have to reveal that to anybody that we sell this to and we go to that title page and you will see 1964 and it's right here 1964 first edition okay now you've got to go further again you got to try to find one that has exactly like yours and you can and I did one has a price of $1,500 I don't know if it was crossed out. I'll have to see if I can put it up here for you. But it basically uh, sold. I think it's more, this might be in the three to $500 range. Personally, I think that. So I will do some more research. When we sell it, we'll let you know. But again, there is three. Let's call it one. Let's call it another 90. Let's call 100. One, two. Let's call it 400. S just being safe. That, that's about, I'd say about 400. Personally, I think that's $400. Four bins, plus the other stuff of about uh, the other stuff was say three hundred. There's seven bins, so that's how I think. That's how I roll with all of that kind of stuff. All right. Now we went to the flea market. Let's get into the Amazon side a little bit of stuff. And the flea market, uh, because I finally have been ungated in DVDs, CDs on Amazon. And people ask me, how did you do that? It just came naturally. If if you have watched some of my videos, you've heard me talk about just hitting the approval button and see what happens. And basically, that's what happened. I was approved because of my performance on Amazon over time. That's what happened. And um, basically, now I look for DVDs. I look for DVD sets like this Charlie Chaplin set that is sealed brand new. Um, I end up paying a little bit for both of these. You're going to see, you'll, uh, you'll hear me talk about it. This one, he wanted 20. I got him to 15. This one will sell for $95 or $99 basically. So yeah, I will make a hundred dollars minus all the fees and everything. I'll still make good money off my $15, a little bit more at risk. Yes. But sometimes you have to put a little bit of money, more money at risk. $15 is nothing. We hope that it doesn't get returned, all that kind of stuff. That is one of the bad things about selling on Amazon, especially if you're doing like arbitrage where you're buying five or six items at, let's say, Walmart, and, you put it, and you're able to put them up, and then one comes back. That could shoot all your profit to 
pieces basically so yeah it's a little bit of a more risk because of the such a liberal return policy with amazon now this one is super super cool i saw it sitting it was sitting just like this on a table and i ran over to it basically because i knew what it was and i wanted to see what the price was he really wanted 40 it's the beatles all their albums it's a it's right here it's all their albums in cd format really nice box set it's not new but because of my experience of selling this already on amazon i already sold one of these on amazon for i believe it was 179 okay so i gave him 35 we got down to 35 so 35 dollars for this beatles collection that will go on amazon fba now it seems like the price has jumped a hair okay uh, i'll put something up here so you can see what i look at not positive so i think instead of about 179 i can maybe go 199 or 219 and beat everybody to it i might that's what i might do with this particular set so there you go that is the power of ebay basically with books and amazon with dvds if you can get ungated in dvds and cd sets there's a dvd set and a cd set so yeah you can make some really good money with both. Okay, up next. We're moving along. We got to crank it along. I got this one. Um, Jerry Rice, the great Jerry Rice. And this was a unique jersey because I remember I'm not a clothing guy. It's a 75 fifth anniversary patch. And it is the throwback Mitchell and Ness. So if you know anything about this type of thing, let me know in the comments. It's not a jersey. It's like a sweatshirt, long sleeve. Um, 3X, I could wear this because you usually wear this stuff kind of big. Maybe I'll wear it. Maybe I'll keep it. I paid $10. Uh, I paid $10 at a garage sale. Um, I love my 49ers. Hopefully this year they're going to win the Super Bowl. It's getting a little getting a little tiring with this great team that we got now and we can't quite get through. So I love 49er stuff. Uh, and if you hear me talk about clothing, it's usually about a jersey or something like that. All right, let's get going. Uh, this came out of Savers. I just I walked into Savers, and literally, on the I literally walked in, guys. I can tell you this. And on the cart, I was oh, I just just, just heard it make a noise. Um, was this cuckoo clock? Um, it only had one weight. It's hard to get all the weights. I don't know why they just disappeared. That's like a pine cone heavy weight. It is made in West Germany. All the no cracks, chips, or anything. Uh, that little noise you heard, the bellows, where it makes a little bird chirp. What I did was I used the eBay video feature, and I had my son hold it, and I moved the bellows so that they could hear that they worked. I don't know how to test it any further, okay? These are usually for the guys to fix. Um, I paid with my discount $15. $15 for this. Uh, I don't think it's one of the really super expensive ones. I think this is about a hundred, roughly a hundred dollars. That's what my thinking is. If you know again, if you know more, let me know. Um, it's a very, I'll push it forward. It's very, very cool. I mean, just really, really nicely made. And uh, yep, 15 bucks. I, hey, you hear me tell you guys, it is all about the two feet. You just have to keep going. You just have to keep walking and you will run into stuff. And I did. I mean, there it was, right there, right there. All right, now, uh, flea market paid up. I paid up for a few things this 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 time. Um, I'm hesitant, but if it's new, I'm going to give it a shot. This I have sold before. You see this, guys, anywhere. You, Stephen, and it's a good price. You grab them. This is the foot massage therapy. It's the... Uh, it's a therapeutic therapeutic foot massage and this one uh, by med massager is absolutely a, will sell all the time what's good about this one I paid $30 why did you pay 30 Mike it's brand new okay brand new uh, unit now they are still around so I went on there online to double check the price right now they're running a promotion of like $289 so this one I'm gonna sell for about 180 and for 180 I should still be able to make uh, good money. So sometimes you pay up. You just, hey, if you're going to turn 30. Let's say you turn 30 and you're minus all the fees and it's 150 right? You made $120. You made four times your money. 
uh, can't beat that much. You just can't. All right, I got two more, and I'm going to save the last one, which is cool. Uh, I'm going to save that for last. Uh, I got this one this morning with my wife as we were going out to the flea market. There's a garage sale right by our house, and it's a Brother sewing machine. It's brand and not brand new. It's uh, in the box. I like it because the packaging is in the box. And it's Brother. I'm not going to pull it out. I paid $20 for it. It's only about a hundred to a hundred and twenty dollar uh, machine, but it's in the box. I can package it. I can then put the label on it. I can. This is one where I can actually kind of do semi calculated, where I will measure it, weigh it, and then see how much it go costs to go to Florida. Maybe even I will do calculated on this one because it is here. Weigh it, seal it, put it in as a calculated. That's the other thing. You hear me? I don't do calculated shipping. But on this case, this is where is a good case for calculated shipping. You can seal it. Then you know the exact weight and shape. The other one, sometimes you don't have the box and you're guessing. This one is a perfect example of doing something for calculated shipping. So that's what I will probably do with this one. Okay. All right. Let me get to the last item. I think we got the last one. Oh, I'm out of range here. Let me make sure. Yep, this is it. This one is cool. Now, I have had things like this before, so I got to plug it in. Um, and I have found various versions of this and different different things. Here we go, guys. Wow, that is so cool. I love it. Uh, MGD light Miller Draft, right? And uh, it's uh, lightning going up around the outside of the bottle. And this was at the flea market, and I ran over just like I did with the Beatles. And I asked the guy, how much? And he goes, $10. No brainer. Gave him the 10 bucks, and there it is. I think it's about 100 bucks. But, it, I mean, this is the kind of stuff you would keep maybe for your house or your man cave. So I don't like to collect things like... I could collect a lot of cool stuff, but... There you go. That's a pretty darn interesting one. And uh, I love this. I love being a reseller. It is just amazing how much cool stuff we get to find and we get to sell and make our lives different. So there we go. All right, I'm going to flip, clean this up, flip this around. I'm going to show you a few things that I sold. So I'll be right back. Okay, everybody, now it's time to show you a few things that we sold. Remember I told you it was just a below average day. Well, while I was gathering up the stuff, I managed to get a sale that put us near our daily average. So for me, over the year, uh, $500 sale day on eBay is my average. And I came up with, finally, $455. So I jumped $200, and I'll show you that item at the end of the video. It'll be the last item, because it's kind of cool. But anyhow, yeah, $455. So that's what I mean, guys. You just, just let it flow, because you never know when something's going to come in as a sale. I got another guy about ready to offer me on another item, which will put me at $500 and about $70 total. So you just, you just don't know. So just keep doing your thing posting and listing all that kind of stuff ship away and you can't go wrong all right now we're going to start off this segment with the hottest artist on the planet right now many of you know when i say the word swifty who are swifties they are taylor swift fans basically right so i have this item it's in a bag of sealed new so i gotta leave it it came out of my friend's locker. If you saw my videos about my friend's locker that I bought, this is a Taylor Swift guitar plate that goes over an Xbox 360 Guitar Hero. Now, um, I got $20 for it, plus $13 shipping. The uh, key you gotta keep in mind here is the Wii has an extra cutout here or somewhere on one of these pieces for the um, controller. Got to make sure you get the right one if you find these. Just make sure. But Taylor Swift right now, red hot. She just paid her truck drivers a bonus, hundred grand each, hundred thousand dollars each. I can't remember, but she spread the bonus among everybody. It was like forty-five million dollars across the spectrum of everybody who's been helping her on her tour. Uh, we were in Seattle when she was going to be doing two shows there. The hotels were booked, guys, everywhere. Outside of town, it was it was nuts. 
absolutely nuts, nuts what the Taylor Swift uh, crowd is doing. Very talented lady. Uh, I enjoy artists who can play instruments. You know me, I'm a classic rocker. So Taylor Swift, big shout out because she can play instruments and all that kind of, I mean, you know what I'm talking about. So Taylor Swift, that was a cool one. Ah, all right, out of the bin of books, we'll go right to the bin of books. Um, a missal, these are, uh, this is a hymnal, the common prayer, the hymnal basically, uh, Catholic book. And uh, this one actually came in the box. It's a Seabury um, prayer book and hymnal number 3251. And it sold for $18 plus $6 shipping. I am very aggressive price-wise. I try to be on these Bibles, missiles, all that kind of stuff because they pile up. I've got a lot of them. I'm going to go on vacation. I am going to put my store on sale. I am going to chop down a lot of stuff to try to help me move things while I'm on vacation. I am going to go in and really do some discounts on a lot of stuff that I need to move. It's the other thing you got to do. All right, out of the bin of books, this is a really cool book. It came in its sleeve. When you see it in a sleeve in the bin, that should tell you something. But Some of Your Blood by Theodore Sturgeon. Wow, psychosis, unclassified, behavior, dangerous, violent. Yes, very uh, cool book. Uh, it took a little while to sell, uh, but I got $20 plus $5 shipping. There were quite a few. If you saw my video on the science fiction, um, science fiction uh, lot, right, and uh, that was a, a big lot of books that I got. This was in there, and there were several, and I've sold several, and this one did really well here. Uh, very happy. I love those kind of sales. They're simple to ship. They're small. They're twenty dollars. You know, a lot of people say, "Why do you sell some stuff for ten or twenty dollars?" Well, it's money. That's why. Simply, it's money. Okay, here we go. Got this one at a garage. I paid two bucks for all this. This is Texas Ware. Uh, and it clearly says it on the bottom, but Texas Ware. And it's kind of like that, you know, Corel, all that kind of stuff, I guess. And the Texas Ware got $24 plus $13 for shipping. Uh, I'm not a big, look, I'm not a big glass plate clothing. But if it looks different, I'll look at it. And that's basically what happened there. It just looked different and, and the price was right, basically. All right, hey everybody, cutting in, I sold another item. So you just don't know, like I told you. So I wanted to show you this one because if I don't, you'll never see it. And I kind of wanted to show you and, and give the explanation about it. So what I sold is this, I sold a lamp, beautiful mid-century modern lamp, but there's a story behind it. So there's, there it is, very cool. Um, and here's the lampshade. The lampshade is very, very atomic, I think, is the pattern. Very cool to me. But what happened was a gentleman uh, sent me a message and said, Hey, I just want this. I want just the lamp. Will you take $200, including the shipping? Well, the big issue is the lampshade, because, you, you know, you got to be kind of careful. you, you got to be careful with anything, but you got to be careful with that. So $200, including the shipping. And I said, you know what? Thumbs up, let's cut that deal. So basically, I'm only gonna have to ship the lamp and that's really sweet. And guess what? He said, I get to keep the lampshade. So now I can try and sell a lampshade and put it in its own box. So that's how it works, guys. You know, so there is, uh, I think it's gonna come out to about 150, just say 150. So five or now it's 600, $600. So that's, that's what I mean, guys. Just keep keep motoring, keep punching, keep listing, and that's it. So let's go take a look at the next item we have for sale. Nope. Out of my friend's locker, lock and loaded, Forgotten Heroes Vietnam. Nice, uh, nice game. Don't sell for a ton of money. It took a little bit of time to sell. Um, the game sold for $18 plus $17 shipping. I got a note from the buyer and before he purchased it, he was really concerned that I wouldn't ship it properly. He said he's had enough issues where people are just throwing them in a poly bag and then bouncing them out and they get damaged. So on these vintage games, you got to box them. And that's my opinion. You got to box them. Can't shove them in a poly because you might get a negative or might get damaged or something. So again, I have every box. I will resize down to as small as possible so that this thing gets there safely. 
and that I can make sure that I don't lose money on shipping. I always want to make money on shipping. All right, we're going to talk a little bit about that right now, but we're going to show you one item, and we're going to show you, because I get a lot of questions about these. A lot of questions about golf clubs. This is an Adams golf club. I only paid two or three bucks for it, probably out of a lot of something, but that's, wow, it's a magnetic one. This is a pretty good size. This is a, a what we call frying pan head. If you look at that thing, it's just a beast. So you got to have the right box to ship this thing. And this one goes in either a 5x5 five five or 6x6. Six six, okay? Because the postal tubes aren't working anymore as far as uh, the cost. I have noticed on Ground Advantage now that if you start doing these post these um, golf clubs, you're starting to see $18 uh, when you go to... If, if you set 1 to 5 business day standard in your shipping queue... You get all of the options. And I'm noticing, again, with the ground advantage, that even the tubed items are coming in at a fairly reasonable rate, $18 or so for a golf club. I'm still shipping them at about 12 to 13 via UPS, okay? This is what I talk about. Everybody asks, well, what do you ship them in? This is what you ship them in, a tube like this. Now, where do you find them? I don't like to pay for these. They're expensive if you have to buy them. I try to find them at golf stores, okay? I ask them, they have some, and I collect them and keep them, okay? And then I have a Joannis fabric that has a lot of smaller ones that irons and some putters can fit in. But in general, I just keep collecting any tube like this I find. Uh, I go to a, a behind a golf store. I ask the golf guys, can I have a couple of boxes? They say, well, we got some. Here you go. That kind of deal. So, uh, that's what you do. Now, the key is you've got to stick to 48 inches and lower. Most drivers are 45. That's probably 45, so it's going to be about 48 inches. That'll be the longest one you want to ship. Otherwise, it jumps up, and the price can get a little crazy on you. So keep an eye out. Like ground advantage. If you're not shipping clubs because you don't have a UPS near you or FedEx near you, you might be able to get in the game. You just have to charge a little bit more for shipping. Okay, so keep that in mind. Where are we going to next? We are going to, oh, we got just two more to go, I guess. <laughs> I told you I didn't have a whole lot, but it's pretty cool. So here, this one, you probably didn't see this one because I don't know if, I didn't make a video of it. Look at this guy. Oh, I got three more. This is a beauty here. This is a Savers find, okay? This guy came out of Savers. And what happened was I walked into Savers. And this is the networking thing. If you get to know the employees, they'll tell you, hey, take a look at this. This was, I was walking in, this is going on the shelf. And they said, hey, look at this, it's really cool. And I looked at it, $9.99 is what they had it marked, $9.99. Uh, it's not as old as you think. It's a Ross Moyen and it's France. Now, um, you've got, I had to really do some research to make sure I got the right one. Uh, the big telltale sign here was the, the sound box down here. They didn't make a lot of sound boxes in general in the 50s, I don't think. So um, it just was not, okay? So there's a couple of them. It's been around a while. This one sold for $75. And we got, get this, $45 shipping. Now, I have another box for this one. So when I bought this, the first thing I'm thinking is how am I going to ship this? Do I have a way to really make it work? And I have the box for it. So I already have it. It's just a matter of packing it tightly in there. And it should go. The box, the particular box I had too, is a very sturdy box. So that should work out pretty well. So can't be afraid to ship, guys. Uh, let me get this next one. You have to be able to ship big items because there's a lot of money. There's good money in these big items. And if you're afraid to ship them, you're just passing up. So you just gotta learn how to do it. It's not that hard, uh, basically, to do it. Hey, just just get in there. All right, next up, um, another savers deal. These do not go for a lot of money. With my discount, I paid ten dollars. It's a Roto Zip Revolutionary Zip Mate. Pretty good condition. This particular item is um, uh, in the box. Obviously, helps it a little bit. All that kind of stuff. And uh, this sold for. $50 plus $24 shipping. And uh, 
it should be easy to ship basically, okay? Uh, going in, you know when you buy something like that, that your price is fixed, it's not gonna go any higher than $49, $59, and you just say, hey, I'm gonna make $30, $25, and just go with it, okay? Just stay with it. All right, up next is the uh, last item of the day, the Fellowship of the Ring. It's a book that I found, I've had it for a while, and it finally sold. It just sold before I came on the show here. And it's in pretty good condition all over here as far as there's a little bit of tear here. Uh, excellent, excellent book to find. Uh, there is the English version. This is the American version right here. So the American version, and you look at you got to be very careful. i got to be really careful of these pages. Um, and it just tells you right down here, uh, 14th printing, okay? It is not the first first it's the 14th remember we talk about this stuff but it's still a first edition 14th printing it's still got the 200 dollars. okay there are some that are not um in in uh i don't know how to explain it. there's book club editions we've talked about that kind of thing you really got to look at them to make sure some it, they're not worth it because they're in such bad condition they just maybe sell for 15 20 bucks but you really got to keep an eye out for books like this. This is a, a, a good author to find is Tolkien. So you can't go wrong with uh, with that. So there you go. That was like two bins of books, right? Because I pay $100 for each bin. And there you go. So we almost had $1,000 worth of stuff that we got out of the bins that we sold can sell on eBay. You, you, you can see how it works. There goes the wind. The door's open. Wind's blowing through. There, there you go. A little bit long video, a lot of stuff on it, a lot of uh, just a lot of information. So uh, thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for taking time out just to, to listen to it, to listen to me tell you this kind of stuff. Really do appreciate it. And um, I will see you in my next video. Don't forget, hey, hit that like, the subscribe. I don't beg but it does help the video. I don't sit there and try and, I'm gonna let it go organically, just let it grow as they say. And if you like my videos, great. If not, hey, thanks anyhow. All right guys, see you in my next video.